wife, thank you. People of God, life abundant. We love you. We appreciate you. We're honored to be here tonight. Thank God for my wife. I just love him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that last song, you know. I, yes. You know, just love it. You know, the Bible said we can come boldly to the throne. Yes. Yes. We can come boldly to the throne of grace that we can find help in time of need. Yes. We can ask what we will, and we know that the Lord will provide. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I, I pray today that tonight that um, you really came to hear. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. 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 Not to see me, but to hear him. Yes. Yes. Because if we don't hear him, we won't get anything. Amen. Amen. And, yes. and no matter who, who the messenger is, That's right. That's right. If, it, if it's coming from the word of God, there's a message within the message. Amen. Amen. And you need to find your part. Yes. The whole message may not minister to you, but there's yes. something within the word yes. that should speak to you Amen. right where you are. Amen. 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 So I'm I'm just I'm, I'm again, I'm honored. Amen. Thank God I was traveling, we were traveling up here and of course we love to talk. <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. And we love to talk about the Word of God. Amen. That's been our conversation for most of the 30 years. All right. The Amen. Word of God. Because yes, yes. I, I, we really just can't find too many things better to talk about. Amen. 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 And so we get to share revelations and share understandings yes. all these years. And so tonight, today I was just sharing with her what I felt the Lord wanted to say tonight. Amen. You know, I'm not a I'm not one of the preachers who preach and, and who study for a word. Um, I, don't, I don't study to get a message. Amen. amen. I just let the word come up. Amen. amen. That's right. Amen. You. But you know I was I was we were praying and we were talking and and I I, I was coming up and I just I just felt the Lord, and Pastor, you've been all in it today. <laughs> and I just want to speak from a thought. Just, just repeat after me. I want more. I want more. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's, that's just what I want to talk about today. And for for my for our character of reference tonight. I want to talk about David. Mm. Yes. Amen. Oh, I want to talk about David. But before I go to the word of the Lord, I just feel led to do this tonight. Uh, you know, I know prayer has gone forth and all of that, and I'm, I'm going to pray again. But is there anybody in the room that's really kind of going through something and you kind of weighed down with that right now. Mm. If, you're, if you're here, just stand up. Amen. If, if something, and, and the reason I want to do this tonight is because the devil want to block. Many times the devil want to block the word of God. And you're sitting and you're going through things and you got problems in your life. And, and we always wait to the end of the service, but some people need it before the word. Amen. Your ears are open and your, your spirit is in tune with what the Word of God is and what the Word want to say to you tonight. And so we needed to just get the heaviness off of you yes. so you can yes. be yes. be light and be ready to hear Amen. your Word tonight. Yes. Amen. 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 Because the Bible said that this is the sure word of prophecy. Yes. 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 But if He can block us from hearing the Word, yes. We'll miss the propheticness that's in the message that was directed just for you. Yes. Amen. So, so today we just want to clear the, the airway. Amen. Amen. And 
And whatever the problem is, I'm not, we're just going to do a blanket prayer, but whatever the problem is, the Bible said we come boldly to the throne of grace. Yes. I just want you to do like they used to teach in the old days. Uh, just lay it at his feet tonight. Yes. 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 Just lay it at his feet tonight. Yes. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the word of the living God. We know that you declared in, to, to, in the word in John 10 that the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. So tonight we bind the devil from every direction. Upon your people, O oh God, I come against the stronghold. We come against the burdens. We come against the infirmities. We come against affliction in the mighty name of Jesus. And we command that they be lifted off. Even right now, I pray that the hand of the Lord will come upon each of them. God, meet them right where they are right now. You said that they that have come to you must come to you believing that you are a diligent rewarder of them that seek after you. So, Spirit of God, right now, lift the heavy oppressions. We pull down strongholds by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. And we speak tonight that they are in, they're, they're here and they're open. And they're clear to hear what you want to say to each of us. We thank you for the power of God that's moving, that's stirring right now in Jesus name we give you praise amen amen praise the Lord praise the Lord tonight coming out of the book of 1 Samuel you'll go there with me 1 Samuel Again, we're talking about one of the greatest characters in the Bible, David. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I want to read seven verses. 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 17, 22 through 29. <clears throat> when you get there, just say amen. 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 Hallelujah. How many preachers in the room tonight? Amen. Amen. How many? I see one hand. How many preachers in the room tonight? I see a few more hands. How many preachers in the room tonight? Come on, come on. I mean, amen. Every hand should have went up. If you, know, if you know Jesus Christ, every hand should have went up in this room. Amen. He called us all to the ministry. Right. When we come to him, amen? amen. I know y'all talking about this pulpit thing, right? <laughs> amen. 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 Everywhere you are, you build your own pulpit. That's right. Glory to God. All right. 1 Samuel 17, 22 through 29. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. <clears throat> and as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, mm -hmm. out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard him, or heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. 
And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down and that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Amen. 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 Again, repeat. I want more. I want more. I want more. All right. <laughs> now, to understand this, there's so much to this story. This, the, you have, we have to go back. We want to give some background uh, of this passage because you, it's hard to just pick David up right in the middle. Amen. Because David is such a key figure to the scripture. David covers 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. He's all in there. Uh -huh. Amen? So if we back up just a little bit, I'm not going to read all the verses. I'm just going to bring this up to part, okay? When we, when we look back at, at the 10th chapter of 1 Samuel and the 19th verse, the people of Israel got a little bit uh, discouraged, so mm -hmm. to speak. And so they cried out for king. And Samuel tells them, you know, that you didn't reject, you, you reject God. Mm -hmm. You know, he wanted to be your king, but you're crying out, you want to be like all the other nations around you. All right. Mm -hmm. Give us a king. Mm -hmm. All right? So in the 24th verse of the 10th chapter, Saul was anointed the first king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Samuel tells them everything that this king is going to do throughout that 10th that, that chapter. And so he gets and Saul gets anointed in the 10th chapter of 1 Samuel. In the 13th chapter, just three chapters after, the 14th verse, they just defeated the Philistines. They're, they're, they're waiting on Samuel to do the burnt offering. But Saul gets impatient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He gets impatient and he decides not to wait because of the people. That's mm -hmm. what he said, because of the people. Mm -hmm. So he went on and Saul said, bring the cattle, bring, bring them in. And he went on and did the burnt offering of which the king was not supposed to do. Okay? Right then Samuel comes as he completes. All right? And Samuel says, in the 13th chapter, in the 14th verse, he said, he tells me, your kingdom will not continue. Wow. All right? You disobeyed God. He said, your kingdom will not continue. He said, you know, he tells him that obedience, later on he's going to tell him, obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's important, very important, that we obey the word of God. Very important. Okay? So we go on and follow the story. In the 15th chapter, Saul already knows that the kingdom... Will his kingdom will not continue? Well, in the 15th chapter, what did he do? Two chapters after the last one, he disobeyed a command again. My goodness. Samuel tells Saul, go down to the, to the Amalekites and wipe them out. Utterly destroy them. Kill everybody. Women, children, Cattle, burn the city, kill everybody. This is the judgment that was pronounced upon them because of what they did to Israel when they came out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. All right? Samuel goes down, or Saul goes down. They kill everybody but the king. Mm -hmm. And they keep the best of the cattle mm -hmm. and bring it back to 
uh, back to Israel. All right. So Samuel comes. And Saul says, we have done everything you told us or commanded us that the Lord has commanded us to do. Saul says, well, what's the bleeding of sheep that I hear in my ears? Mm -hmm. mm. And so Saul goes into defense mode. Are y'all used to that? <laughs> All right. Mm. He goes into defense mode. Why he kept the best cattle. And he spared the king. Samuel kills the king. But here's more than all of that. It's the pronouncement that's laid upon Saul at this time. Mm -hmm. In the 15th chapter, the 23rd verse, Saul disobeyed the command of the Lord. And what happens is, I want to read this verse. This is a very powerful verse, the 15th chapter, 23rd verse. I want you all to hear this verse. For rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Mm -hmm. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Mm -hmm. I want you to hear that. Rebellion is as witchcraft. Wow. Mm -hmm. Stubbornness is as iniquity, and idolatry. It, it's important to hear this because of the fact that God has raised up leaders whom we are to follow. Whoever we sit under, wherever we go, we are to follow that leader, not rebel. Amen? Amen. God is speaking to us through the word of the Lord. And, and he's, he's giving us a, you know, because everybody, who wants more? I want more. Okay? We all want more. Then the question would come to you, what have you done with what you got? Amen. To cry out for more means that I have done what I have used, what I got, and now I need some more. All right? We're going to get to there in a little bit. but So here we are. Saul now, not only he, did he say your kingdom will not continue, but now you have been rejected mm. as king. Mm. Oh, my. And he said he took it and gave it to his neighbor. Mm. All right. Mm. <laughs> wow. Okay. In the 16th chapter, God has to deal with the prophet. What's the prophet? The prophet is, he's all shook, he's all torn down. God, I anointed this man. Man, this was the man you chose. And God comes to the prophet in the 16th chapter, the first verse, and he said, Samuel, why are you mourning over what I rejected? You know, how many people, how many, why are we crying over what God has taken? Amen. 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 You're sitting here, listen, get up, Samuel. Get up and go to the house of Jesse. Because I got a king there. All right. After my heart. Yes. That's what he tell him. Go down to the house of Jesse because I have got a man. I've already approved it. He's already ready. I'm, I, I, I got him ready for you. Go on down there. All right. 16th chapter. That's the first verse. Amen. How long will you mourn over what I rejected? All right. Then we go on down into the 16th chapter and the 13th verse. And in the 13th verse, after Samuel had went through all the sons of Jesse, because he didn't call David. He left him out there. And uh, Samuel said, none of these sons are the one. Mm -hmm. Do you have another son? He said, well, yeah, I got the youngest one. 
David probably around the age of 12 here. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so he said, well, bring him. Brings him in and he holds up the flask of oil and the oil began to pour. Yes. In the 16th chapter, the 13th verse, David is anointed as king of Israel. Amen. Wow. Powerful. All the brothers are looking at this. Everybody, Jesse, the daddy, is seeing all of this. But there's only a problem. David's 12, and Saul ain't dead. Mm. <laughs> hmm. That creates a problem. Yes. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, God, what are you doing? Saul is not dead, and here you are. You're anointing another king. What does he do? David's 12. Now, I'm, I want you to think about that. Now, now, David, the scripture don't tell us what goes through David, what David goes through here. But the Bible did say something very important in that 13th verse. When the anointing, he said, when he poured the oil upon him, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Yes. All right. Wow. All right. <laughs> I'm the king. Imagine what a 12-year-old would think. <laughs> I'm the king. <laughs> Samuel gets up and go home. Right after that, he just gets up and go home. What do David do? Go back to the shape. Yeah. <laughs> now, you got to let your imagine, imagination begin to run because the Bible don't tell us anything yet. So you got to begin to think like a 12-year-old. <laughs> what would be running through your mind the, the prophet everybody knows the prophet when, when the prophet speak it happens if he anointed you you anointed but he's back with the sheep and you're 12 years old you begin to wonder I'm sure David began to wonder what is this I'm the king but Samuel ain't dead so what am I going to do? He, he faithfully took care of his father's sheep. You know, I know I know a lot of preachers, they preach, and we, we kind of talked about this on the way up, but a lot of preachers preach, you know, that Jesse forgot about David, kind of just like, you know, you know. And I hear it that way so often, but I said, well, what if it wasn't that he thought he didn't forget about him? He's only 12. <laughs> he just... Not my youngest, not my baby. That's my baby. He's only 12. No, he didn't bring him up. Maybe it was for protection for David. You know, we don't know why Jesse didn't bring David. Everybody takes their own opinion, they don't take. But you know one thing about it, God didn't forget about David. Amen. And wherever you are, no matter what you're doing, like it or not, God, and I forgot about you. Yes, Amen. Right. Amen. 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 So, what happens then, and this is very, very, this was neat. This, <laughs> I saw it today. I, I, I've read this over and over, but I saw, saw this today. This was very neat. In the 14th verse of that same chapter, the, remember the Bible said in the 13th verse, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. In the next verse, it declared that the spirit of the Lord must have left Saul, and an evil spirit of the Lord came upon him. The, the, the spirit that was upon Saul left, but it came upon David. And David was anointed as the king. So listen to what happens. The servants of Saul says, hey, <laughs> He's got demons. No, no. <laughs> the, the servant of, of, of Saul said, he got an evil, an evil spirit of the Lord that's come upon him. So, so here's what we got to do. King, now they're going to tell the king what to command them to do. King, command someone to find somebody who is skillful on the heart. Mm -hmm. That when the evil spirit of the Lord come upon you, he'll play. And that spirit will depart. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said, or Saul said, hey, that's a good idea. Provide me a man. Mm -hmm. And then the, another servant said, hey, 
I got just the man. Yeah, I look at God. <laughs> Jesse has a son. Yes. He's skillful. And he's a mighty man of valor. Mm -hmm. And he's handsome too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. Yes, he said, let's get him. So what do they do? They go down to the house of Jesse and tell Jesse, we need your son. Yep. We need your youngest son. Uh, right. We need David to come to the kingdom. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, so in the 16th to 18th, they go down and they talk to Jesse to get a man to get David. In the 21st verse, guess where David is? <laughs> He's in the kingdom. All right, it is my, my, my. My, my, my. Look at that. David in the backfield or in the wilderness or wherever he had in the back, he, he taking care of the sheep, 12 years old, saying to the Lord, God, I want more. Mm. You anointed me to be king, and now here I am still in the back. Little did he know, before that day was over, we're still in the 16th chapter, mm -hmm. little did we know that he's going to be ushered <laughs> from the backwoods to the kingdom. And not only to the kingdom, but he becomes the armor bearer yeah. to the king. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. wow. That's awesome. You see, it, 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 what's so neat about all of this is, is that in order for David to become the king, mm -hmm. so to speak, he needed to get in the vicinity mm -hmm. of the kingdom. So they brought him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> To the kingdom. Mm. Amen. 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 I want more. I want more. The word more means, according to Webster, it means greater. Mm. It means that you wanted more than what you expected. Mm. I want more than what is expected. So when you're saying you want more, you're saying I want more, God, than what is expected. Then, the, then to answer that really more def, def, definely or definite, you got to begin to ask yourself, what are my expectations mm -hmm. of what God has called me to? All right? If you have no expectations, if you're not expecting anything, it's an indication why you're not got anything. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, here we are. David is brought into the kingdom and it brought us right up to where we are.